I feel like this topic has been worked over and worked over. There's really no point in continuing on in a conversation that everyone has had or everyone has thought about. Uh, but then again, it's relevant, uh, it's important, and it affects us all, particularly those of us that live in the United States. I'm tired, you're tired, we're all tired. We say to ourselves, I work too hard, I do too much. But then we go right out and work too hard and do too much. I, I mean, you're right. I, I, I find myself sliced into thinner and thinner pieces every week. If I could just find some way to spend more time hanging out. The easy response seems to be there's more to life than working. The easy response to that is, well, work brings us the things that we enjoy in life. It allows us to do the activities and purchase the items that give us joy in our life. Deep down, I think many of us look at people with little possessions or no homes, homeless, and we say, I envy them for not having these material possessions and these concerns, but at the same time, we see the despair in them. So there's an inherent conflict between wanting the things that you need, doing the things that you need to do to get those things, and not wanting to be taking part in that despair that we see in others. I feel especially torn because, you know, I, I, I am my own home in a big way. If I were to just lay about being lazy, not doing anything, rotting away, wouldn't I just then become a home? I feel like there's three kinds of people. And when I say people, I mean Americans in this context. The first is the person that lives their life, wants to live their life, and when their life is over, they're happy with the life they led. The second type of person is concerned with the welfare of their children. They wanna make the lives of their children better than the lives that they had. And the third type, they want their name to resonate beyond their life. And within these three different types of people, I feel like there should be some common ground where we can say this is a happy medium between working hard, and enjoying the fruits of your hard work, or not working hard and enjoying the fruits of that free time. I, uh, I remember I had an uncle growing up and uh, we would spend time together and everyone would be having fun at, at a picnic. Our uncle, he was always so, he was so miserable. And my uncle, he wanted to be important. He wanted the, the family name to live on. And to this day, I'll never forget what it was like watching him get run over by that car. How do we reconcile the various needs and wants that we have? And why do Americans seem to be the country with the most inability to have that sort of reconciliation? It's true. You're right. I'm tired of rolling down the street and feeling like everyone's looking at me like I'm some sort of rusted out old car that they regret buying. I I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to fall apart on you and let you down. You know, I, 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 I can be productive, but I, I, I've spent so much of my life 
trying to define myself in relation to the stereotype of lemons as as being bad products as as being broken somehow you know i i feel like i'm 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 never going to be able to work hard enough to to not be a disappointment is that enjoyment is enjoyment knowing that you're aware of things that you enjoy they want to they want to grind us up and stick us inside other things they want to they want to cut us up and, and put us in things. What is that the nature of happiness? Is being surrounded by the accumulation of you and your friends and your family's collective slicing up of your productivity and energy and compressing it into a a set of experiences and objects that surround us. Looking back in history, we think of the unit, we think of the clan. Is all we're trying to do now a reproduction of that in a consumer and technology centered society, which since America is at the forefront of digital technology gives us the unique perspective of what it means to be surrounded by the products of our collective slices of energy and productivity it's like those headsets i see people strapping to their faces and then they they pretend they're a lemon or a you know a hot dog or something i don't know it's ver some virtual produce and and i and i just wonder is it that we're so far removed from our essence that that we need to simulate it you know are are, are we so uncomfortable in our skins that we want to get out of them and and get into a nice sorbet isn't it okay for me to just be tired i i i'm gonna rot Virtual reality gets a bad rap. People think that those entering virtual reality are trying to escape from reality. But maybe the layering of experience that virtual reality provides is the layering of enjoyment. Maybe experience is enjoyment. And therefore, by extending the reach of our experience we're opening up the possibility for more enjoyment but if that were true then those with access to virtual reality would be happier but i'm not so sure because when i think of the people that make virtual reality i think of overworked workers that are happy some of the time there, there were layers to that. And I think about this virtual reality you're talking about. And uh, maybe, maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe it's, it's not escapism. You know, maybe we're being squeezed too hard. And, and, and we're just getting squirted right out of our bodies into these other places where, where we might somehow get closer to ourselves. Where we might see ourselves from the inside and say, hey... I may be a lemon, but I'm also an onion. If virtual reality is our attempt to be squeezed into new environments, maybe that's indicating that we enjoy pressure. Maybe it's the pressure that gives us enjoyment. When I think about my time as an adolescent, it wasn't enjoyable because I was under no pressure. I was given no responsibility. When you're in virtual reality, you're in an environment complete with pressure because the world that you're experiencing, you know the full extent and parameters 
of the area for which you're in. And that's a lot of pressure to be involved in a landscape by which you know the full extent. If our own reality, the real reality, and our happiness is based on the pressures that that reality provides us, maybe we need to figure out how we can view our own world by the extent of its boundaries. Well, I think you just said it perfectly. I wish, I, I wish we could talk about this forever, but they need me back at the plant. <laughs>